everybody. Hi. Uh, we are streaming on June 22nd, and Yay. I'm so sorry that we missed Sunday, but it was 5 million degrees. <laughs> it was real bad. Um, I woke up. It was awful. <laughs> I woke up on Sunday and looked at the thermometer on the deck, and this is at like 9.30, and it was already 28 degrees, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I was on the end. I was in like the end day of a cold that knocked me out for five days, and I just sat. I was just like, I don't know if I'm burning up with fever. Uh, I'm miserable. <laughs> I don't know what to Basically, do. Basically, Sunday would have been a train wreck. Yeah. Uh, My so, place was nice. Well, I, I like uh, MacGyvered this system where we had all the windows shut and we had the AC going in the other room and I had a fan blowing yes. at exactly right. the right <laughs> angle to bring in the cold air here. But it's still, as soon as the sun hits the side of the building yeah. at 5 yeah, p.m., it's fucked. Yeah, no. So all bets are off. It was just a race to get the comic done and then get the fuck out of this room. Yeah. <laughs> but we're yeah. here now! Hooray! Ta-da. Sorry we missed you guys before. Thank you um, for bearing with us. Yes. Um, so... I haven't quite decided what I'm going to draw for the majority of the stream, but I figured while we uh, we wanted to have a little chat about Avatar first. Yeah. Because why the fuck not? We have a schedule of things we yeah. want to talk about. And we're going to be... There's an agenda. <laughs> we're going to be sliding into the Steven bomb, not going to lie. We sure are. <laughs> um, but I actually kind of wanted to work on this uh, imaginary uh, rose and garnet fusion thing again. And after seeing the Steven bomb, I realized that I don't like how I did her weaponry because uh, I feel like A, it would be bigger because it's a huge fusion mm-hmm. um, and B, I feel like it would be a little bit <coughs> either more combined or separate so I don't mm. like how she's got two bare arms doing nothing and then the other two arms have all the weapons so I wanted to ask you guys if you had any ideas slash brainstorm mm. about what else we can do yeah we'll have to give some thought into like the ways to combine because mm-hmm. like all the other fusions we've seen have combined oh, their yeah. weapons yeah. really, really cleverly, and so Except we... we still don't know what Rainbow Quartz's weapon was, but well, I assume she'll come back in a flashback or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, but yeah, like... Yeah. Speaking of which, I'm gonna plug this right now. If you're a $10 patron on uh, the Megasenix Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Megasenix, uh, I finished that drawing from last stream. And uh, you can have it at a bazillion and five resolution as a download if you're a ten dollar donor. It's really good. It's very pretty. Yes. Yeah. Ash keeps getting more and more ridiculously talented. Like every I know, year, right? I know her, and it's disgusting, and I hate it. Because, <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I look at that and like, you, you, like compared to where you were when you were li- like, like when we lived together, it, it's like a quantum leap. See, and, and I don't were, notice and were, until I go back yeah. to the old comics. I'm like, Ugh. And, like and that's not yeah. to say that you weren't good then, but then versus now, like, I mean, you're doing no, lighting it's... things in there that you never would have been doing back yeah, then. Yeah, I know, right? And, like, uh, in like, fact, I was there's actually perspective happening. I know. We this hate is... perspective. That was our thing. <laughs> this is, we had a thing, and that was it. Hating perspective together. This is actually probably one of the first, alone. One of the first things I've drawn where I've actually used perspective, and it kind of works. Yeah. Holy shit! I feel so betrayed, to be perfectly honest. I mean. Um, but uh, sorry, someone mentioned in the chat. This is the Stephen Garnet. Uh, this is actually supposed to be Rose and Garnet as a fusion. Um, hence why I don't really know what to do with it yet. But uh, for all of you who have seen the Stephen Bomb, the last weapon was fucking huge and it made me yeah. <laughs> made me feel inadequate with yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we'll oh, get into yeah. that later. So we're going to brainstorm on this for a little yeah. while. But uh, we were actually just talking about Korra. Yeah, so let's course. continue along that. We're going to yeah. talk about Korra. We're going to talk about a Stephen Bomb. We're going to tell stories. Yeah. It'll be good. And... If there's if we run out of things to talk about, which I doubt we will, we will show off. We might actually show off and play a little bit of this while I'm drawing. Yeah, it's really cool, and you guys can't cheat with we'll, us. <laughs> yeah, we we will just show off. Um, yeah, because I, I was mentioning that I'm watching through uh, Korra. I'm like two episodes from the end of season one with Q Monster, and how I really quite like it. It took me a couple of episodes to get. To, like, wrap my head around Korra as a person, because, of course, you're used to Aang, who's yeah. genial and positive and, you and know. And Korra's so different and than Korra's Aang. And Korra's so she's different. And, but she's... 
Well, I mean, she's a, like, when we join her, she's a teenager. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And, so, I, and I like also all like all teenagers, that. they suck. And I also like that. I like how the first series was about kids slash yeah. young teenagers. This one's about mm-hmm. older teenagers who kiss each other and have feelings and pout. Yeah. A lot. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, so it took me a little bit of time to wrap my head around her, uh, but... I I'm not gonna spoil anything or anything serious, Metricos, because I haven't actually seen much that's like there's been no big revel I'm right before the big revelations. Um but we are gonna talk a little bit about Airbender and the Zuko feels because uh. I saw that in chat and Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> See, I'm all, okay, I'm all okay, about talking on. last Airbender because that's where my heart is. Brainstorm. Mm. Yo. What? She has um, a massive shield mm-hmm. um, that's held on by one of the gauntlets, and the other one is like no. a, a giant fucking sword, and the hilt on it looks like a fist grab around. No, a shield that punches. <laughs> Just with the fist. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The shield has, the like, has like a yeah, like she wear like the shield is like part of the gauntlet or something. Like like the fist is her, so she can punch and shield at the same time. <laughs> yes. That <can> always happen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, yes. So, but yeah. So I, I, I really also enjoy the like. Any time a flashback comes up on Korra, I'm just like I've yeah. made Q Monster. We have gone back and gone through them frame by frame for the really quick flashes ones, and uh, I'm just like Sokka. Oh my god! Like, yeah. well, it, it's kind of yeah. weird, isn't it? That like you'll be watching Korra, but what you really want is just more Airbender. Yes, absolutely. And um, have you actually have you checked out any of the uh, of the comic books? Yes. Okay, because they're pretty great. Yes, I want to own them. That's like they've the done next these time... really great hardcover editions. Yeah, the next uh, time I have sixty spare dollars lying around, <laughs> calm your tits. Slow your roll, son. Slow your roll. Don't worry, um, everybody. Uh, there's sirens outside, and Buster is off to protect us. On the case. Um, Even though it is quite a bit cooler in here, we still have to keep the window open, which means Buster can hear everything. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, no, I did check out the two... Uh, the third comic I didn't like so much, but The Search and The Promise mm-hmm. are amazing, and the next time I have a spare $60 lying around, I will absolutely be purchasing those... Um, books. One of the creators is now good. doing the the new Korra comic book for nice. um, for Dark Horse, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Di Martino. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I never remember his first name. Uh, Something with a D. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. At any rate, uh, so he's writing the, which I'm is cool, but I'm also a little worried because I that was my um, my major uh, thing about the first season of Korra was that it was just written by uh, by this one guy D- Brian and Mike right? okay yeah uh, it, it, uh, I think they, they call them break on uh, right. Tumblr but uh, yeah it was just it was just those two and that's and coming out of that season I was like I feel like what made uh, Last Airbender so strong was mm-hmm. that it had a really good writing crew yeah and part of what I felt was the weakness of Korra was that it was just two people writing right. who while they had been involved in Last Airbender they hadn't been the head writers even on right. that like there was there was a writing team that did that and they yeah. were they were the showrunners so like they were they helmed the story but they didn't create it the way that uh, they were creating right. Korra and so Korra to me the two stumbling blocks there were just the two of them writing and way fewer episodes. Like, they only get, yeah. what, 13 episodes? 13 episode? per season, yeah. Ver- versus, like, 24 yeah. for Airbender. And I remember watching the first season of Korra and it's, thinking... It's, certain things are very rushed. It, it feels... Yeah, yeah. like, I would have... Yeah, w- watching it, I was just like, man, I, I really wish I had more episodes for this particular yeah. p- piece or that particular piece because these are wrapping up way too fast. Yes. And then the very next episode, Korra has forgotten all of the lessons yes! she learned last episode. That pissed me off so yes. much. Like, Although Cam has a really good, he's like, she, I can't remember exactly what he said about it, but it ties into her being a water-based bender and uh, the... Um, but yeah, no, that's another complaint I've heard. And I, the, some of the interpersonal stuff, like the love triangle stuff, like mm-hmm. all of a sudden Mako is like, hey, oh, Cora. And I was like, wait, wait, huh? 
It's been 13 seconds? Okay. Yeah, and... <laughs> But, that, oh, that pissed me off. I was like, um, oh, Asami, you deserve so much better than this douchebag. She's and, so pretty. You know, God and, damn. And, and the first hairbender on the series. Which yeah. Was great. And, like, hot damn, son. You know, I am, like, I was giving a short, you know, consideration actually. to going as Sapphire for Halloween and bringing Q-Monster along as mm-hmm. Ruby, but I might just... Go as Asami because that'll first of all have way less dye mm-hmm. consider and like <laughs> paint consider yeah, yeah. involved, but also she's so pretty. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and the the episode yeah. where uh, yes, Metricos, my first girlfriend turned into the moon. That's rough, buddy. That's <laughs> that easily one of the greatest Zuko lines. Sorry, one of the greatest rough, lines. This, this gem fusion <laughs> is a uh, my, my yeah my rendition of a. Uh, Garnet and uh, Rose together, yeah. um, and I'm still trying to figure out the weaponry. And I'm thinking that maybe uh, two shields and two swords would be pretty deadly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would work. Well, that that makes I'm sense too like, for yeah. for the number of arms. Yeah, it, I, you could uh, you could but, like, alternate the, the swords so, being like so huge. one shield and sword per side. Yeah. So that's not like mm-hmm. two shields on one side and two swords on the other. You could have. Like one shield down, one sword up, and then one shield up and one sword down on like oh, like yeah, alternating sides. So you can do two shields like that and two swords like this. Like, yeah. Awesome. See, I really wanted to use uh, Garnet's gauntlets as the hilt. Yeah, yeah. Of the swords mm-hmm. yep. and just make them fucking massive. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like this one, especially with the size of Garnet and Rose, would just be fucking beefed. Well, there's like, no yeah. reason she Super can't beefed. have four gauntlets, right? Like, I mean, Super she's got four beefed. arms. True so. story. Yeah. Um. Super. But that episode where uh, Bolin and uh, and Korra go out yeah. and like have the greatest date in the history of time, and I love and, Bolin. Yeah, Bolin's and, my favorite person. And, and, and He's then awesome. like yeah. and then like immediately thereafter, just just gets stomped. Like, yeah, it's just like oh. And watching that episode, I was like, oh man, I really hope they don't go the very obvious route of having her then immediately, you know, hook up with with Mako and you know crush Bolin's feelings here because that would just that would be su- the easy way out of this situation that would be you know like mm-hmm. such a standard way to go I hope they're not going to do that I hope they're going to say oh hey this person initially was very attracted to this person mm-hmm. but then discovered that you know physical attraction isn't the same as meeting somebody with whom you really connect with and yeah. then she really connects with this other person and then Oh hey, and then I was like, and then they did it. And I'm like, oh okay, yeah. I guess I guess we're going the easy way out of this. Yeah. That was I was like, oh. Um. So yeah, but I am enjoying Cora. I'm not allowed to watch. Like I asked, I was like, can I watch ahead? Because again, I was homesick for two days. Mm-hmm. Like, can I watch ahead in Cora? I was like, no, oh, fine. Um. But it's, uh, yeah, no, I'm enjoying it, but I really can't wait until I've been told Zuko shows up later, and I can't mm-hmm. wait. For those who don't know, I already have, like, probably as my graduation present to myself from grad school, I'm getting a kitten, and his name is going to be Zuko. <laughs> it's been planned. Oh. This is happening. So, yeah. Um, so that's my feelings on Korra. Metricos, I'm glad that you also had the Zuko feelings, because... I uh, I was mentioning before we went live. Actually, we started talking about this, and we we're like, "Oop, save for stream." Yeah. Um, Cora lost me the first time I watched through the first season, um, probably because I wasn't paying enough attention to it, which is a huge downfall of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, but I actually, when I rewatched it, I kind of liked the progression in the same way that I liked the Final Fantasy X to Ten Two progression. Mm-hmm. I'd like to think that as soon as like things aren't quite as dangerous anymore and people are fucking mm-hmm. getting along that immediately it just falls to well what do we use these powers for entertainment yeah. Yeah. I, yes. I loved the bending league and, and i would have I, loved yeah. to have seen that be an arc that went across the entire season like that yeah. would have that would have made for a really easy way to structure the season yeah is to have it follow her season in the professional bending league yeah um and i do like this notion of like well they are, you know, and they've progressed. I mean, it's been however many years, a mm-hmm. couple of decades, 
few decades, whatever. Um, so they've progressed fairly quickly through the Industrial Revolution or their equivalent. And um, Amon makes a really good point. He's like, we have electricity and cars and automation. What do we need benders for? And, mm-hmm. like, obviously, yeah, they do, you know, it's going to be proven that they do. But it's an excellent point. Like they have automated a lot of the things that they would have used benders for in Avatar. It's part of what makes Amon a really interesting and engaging villain is that he's not necessarily wrong. Well, and that's, um, actually uh, Yahtzee of Zero Punctuation mm -hmm. pointed out in his review of uh, Bioshock Infinite, and Mm -hmm. he was comparing, um, what's his name, to uh, Ryan to Andrew Ryan? Yeah, Andrew Ryan, the first one, and um, saying, like, the good villain is the one who speaks sense. Mm -hmm. Where you're just like, you know what? You have a good point, and that's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they they uh, tried to do the same thing with Palpatine in uh, episode, three, right? you know that that scene where he's you know he's actually talking to Anakin. And he's like, listen, it's a really narrow dogmatic view that yeah. the Jedi have, and if you want to be if you want to be you know a wise and just ruler, really, you need to have a much more open view. And I was like. I see where they're trying to go with this. Bless them, they try. They're, they're really, like, he's trying hard. And in the hands of a better writer, this could be great. Because this is exactly yes. what Palpatine needs to be doing. Yes. But the problem yes. is that only an idiot would fall for this at this stage. Yes. You know, these were seeds that need to be planted in episode two, or better yet, an episode one where Anakin isn't a child. Yes, and in my head canon, there's been a lot of head canon uh, <laughs> after yeah. seeing episode three. Yeah, I know. Right? Um, but in my head canon, where, uh, for the record, Anakin is played by James McAvoy, who, who is both attractive and can act, and is around the right age. Um, it's a class thing. Like, the, you know, the whole thing with uh, Amidala, they grow up as children together. She's becomes a queen. Like, it's... Mm-hmm. She, he is a slave boy. It, it, there's this class thing when they get back together where he has had to work and scrabble and, like, crawl his way up, and she hasn't. And even though they fall in love, there's this... Er, there's this need for power. He feels powerless in her world and Mm -hmm. wants that power, wants to feel... Like, it's the same way that uh, lottery winners... Sorry, did we just get to Star Wars again? (laughs) Briefly, and then we're going to Steven Bob, I promise. No, it's fine, it's fine. Um, I just like how I I got sucked into this for a second and I turned around Star Wars. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But, like, how lottery winners, you know, tend to go completely bankrupt right away, right? Like, you strive for this... um, and then when you get it, you don't know what to do with it. And well, so and even that a, was what could have been. Yeah, which would have been a great way to go. And like yeah. even on a smaller scale, when you start making more than you did previously, your spending almost always expands yes. to uh, to encompass that rather than staying at the level exactly. you were at and so saving gets, the surplus. He gets a little bit of power and he's like, this is great, I want more. And the Jedi go, no. For completely antiquated reasons, we don't really can't really explain other than because. Yeah. And you know, and and so there was you, you this have to potential. do a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, mental gymnastics to make episodes yeah. 2 and 3 work. Well, I'd always known, I mean, I refused to watch episode 3 for a long time. That's fair. That's fair. And it took a lot of like a lot of like like, memory-obliterating amounts of alcohol to get me through it. Um, but part of what was so infuriating was that there was the seed yeah. of something in the third... The first one's awful, the second one is, ir- like, the irredeemable, awful seed. Ep- like, yeah, episode three, it's weird oh. because it's it's the least offensive of the three, but it's also the one that fails the biggest. Because it, it had was the most, a movie. It was the most important one, too, and mm-hmm. it failed miserably, like... Anakin's fall is an important thing. You have yes. to do it right. And, and he had to be a good man. Yeah. Like, despite all of this urge for power, he needed to be a good man, and he was never a good man. Yeah. Um, Clone Wars did a really good job of making Anakin likable. 
Okay, that's good. The it's the same way that like the um, the new Grey novel, the one where it's told mm-hmm. from Christian Grey's perspective, actually makes Anna look better because <laughs> all of this stuff, like he ends up reading a lot of her reactions as her kind of turning him down, and everyone's mm-hmm. like, "Oh, she has a backbone in this one." Yeah. <laughs> Similar kind of thing. Oh, I need to uh, put this somewhere because it seems to have developed a, a leak or a crack oh, dear. or something. Oh, no. I don't. I don't want to. Uh, well, first of all, we'll get some tissues. Uh, and we'll get you a plate. Okay. And then we will talk Stephen Baum. Unless yeah. Brad's listening. Hey, Brad. Ooh, bartender. We have a spill. Face you. Bust has to sneeze. Face you. Brad's listening. Hey, Brad, do you want to like put this in the sink? Yeah. There's a crack on the side. You can put it in a different cup if you'd like. Ah, uh, sure. Sure. <laughs> Awesome. What a guy. So, that's Stephen Bomb. That Stephen Bomb. Stephen motherfucking never, universe. Never underestimate our ability to turn something into Star Wars. Because <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> You've proven this to me <laughs> on many occasions. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Want to know my favorite? Well, no, okay. my second First favorite Okay, first of all, thing. spoiler yes. alerts. Unabashed spoilers. Um, Stephen Baum is the five episodes that dropped this past week. Yeah. And Um, yes, if spoilers, you should mute if you don't want to be spoiled. For the record, I was spoiled for one of the biggest surprises of the end of season one, and I still enjoy the show, so... Um, I'm gonna have to rely on you guys to let the chat know when people come in that we're spoiling, and let them know when we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Hooray. Starting um, now. Starting now. So, my second favorite thing. Sardonics? 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 No, no, no. <laughs> but, but not just sardonics, but the fact that... So, SDCC happens. Yeah. And everybody, they drop this clip of sardonics, and everyone's like, oh my god, sardonics, she's awesome. And then the episode happens, and the context around that clip is horrifying (laughs) like i never got the chance to tweet this but horrifying (laughs) it was wonderful i was so happy because that's what the creators of steven universe do (laughs) they they just they they wrap your heart strings around a finger and then they tug yes i was surprised like sardonyx had like this kind of vegas magician vibe somebody said ruby rod Mm mm-hmm in cartoon yeah, form. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I love it. And uh, I, like, she's already kicked out Rainbow Quartz for my favorite fusion. Um, yeah. Simply because up until, like, well, I mean, obviously we didn't know about Garnet in the first place, right? Yeah. But the fusions up until, I can't, I can't really count Rainbow Quartz in that one, but, like, up until, like, recently, they haven't shown a lot of... Um, their own personality, except for Garnet, obviously. Yeah. Um, versus, like, just showing the personalities of the people who have fused. Yeah. I.e., like, Alexandrite would have been the other big one that you saw early on. Yeah. And Alexandrite was very clearly just one of the three gems speaking at any given time, even though it was different voice actors. Yeah. They were arguing with themselves. It was very, yeah. very devastator. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. they weren't working together. It, it, Alexandrite didn't seem to have its own personality, or her own personality at all. Um, yeah. It was just one of the gems talking. By the way, <laughs> side note: I fell into another. Um, yeah, we saw that rabbit hole. Yep. Um, speaking of garnet, um, I didn't catch, and I don't think anybody did except somebody who had the sharpest of eyes. But in that exact episode, they actually gave away the fact that yeah. garnet was a fusion. And I, I, I looked at yeah. Yeah, they uh, in the scene where she splits apart, she uh, or Alexandrite splits apart. She splits apart into four different gems for yep. one split second, and you can see the outline of Ruby and Sapphire. You have to run the YouTube video at like. You just you have to pause it and go frame by frame because for yeah. one frame they're completely they're separate. Fuckers. They are sneaky amazing. Fuckers. That's the thing is that this show is planned out in the same way that you know, which leads me to believe that you can pick up clues and figure it out. Yes, and I will go into my insane Steven Universe fan theory later. Yeah, but yeah, I um. <sighs> Oh my god, apparently the countdown for the Stephen Bomb had the subtitle, Please, Rebecca, Don't Hurt Him. (laughs) Yeah. But, yeah, I... Oh, man. Like, 
so my yeah, that was my second favorite thing was how Sardonyx went from oh my god, it's Sardonyx, she's amazing to no, 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 no. Oh no. my god, like yeah. Oh my god, Sardonyx, that was painful. Yeah. yeah. Painful, especially for anybody who has ever been like horrifically insecure around mm-hmm. like and and socially insecure around people and yeah. not sure how to navigate these things like uh um my first favorite thing of course was the entire episode at the motel <laughs> which interestingly gives us our first view of uh the differences bet- or like like our first concrete view of the difference between our earth and their earth mm-hmm. the key the the keystone state the state called keystone yeah uh which is i was like okay so it's clearly you know it's like the states is it the united states we don't know but it's the states and one of the states well, yeah, is called like, keystone like i said florida's missing mm-hmm. from uh yeah the the thing at the top but yeah, no, that just I've wa- I've gone back and watched those scenes with Ruby and Sapphire a They're great. bunch of times cuz it's so cute. I also I love Steven's dad in that episode. He's but pretty I always, awesome, but I, I love Greg all the time. Yeah, but, Greg's uh, pretty rad. Uh <laughs> just, uh, not before we check for bed bugs. Yeah. me down. <laughs> yep. Or or when he comes back and when he like peeks into the room and Sapphire's just He's not going to like that it's square. <laughs> yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah. Steven, one day you're going to Sapphire's learn to Sapphire's terrifying, by the way. Pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was so sweet. She's like, no, I don't think you're stupid. I was like, oh, oh my god, I love it. <laughs> like I destined it. to pee in the grass, too. <laughs> it is so faded. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um... So yeah, no, I uh, that was that was really good, and I the other thing I liked um, about the episode with the play, which was that the ship. Um, no, no, that wasn't the friendship. That was uh, historical friction. Historical friction, right? Because um, now I'm blank. I know that there was a resolution in friendship, but now I can't actually remember. I've only seen that episode once, and I was sick. Yeah. But uh, historical friction. What I liked about it is that it showed the advantages of the ten-minute format very well. Because mm-hmm. in in a twenty-one minute format, we would have seen a lot of like they cut out some because th- that plot's been done before in mm-hmm. other sitcoms and other shows, and uh, you know we didn't see any of the audition process we didn't see any of the rehearsal process we didn't see any of the stuff that they would normally show to pad out that story like it was perfectly condensed down into Mm -hmm. what needed to happen um it is my second favorite play in a cartoon episode next to my first favorite being the avatar the uh Ember Island players which is the greatest use of a play within an animated show yep I think it's pretty good. I mentioned to uh, Brad a few times that one of my favorite things about Avatar is that when they do a filler episode, it's excellent. Like, you don't feel the need to skip by it at all. That beach episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) They could just call it The Feels. Firebender High. I love it. Love it. Because in animes, in a lot of animes, apparently there is this thing called the beach episode where, like, the characters will just go Go to a beach. For, for every, you know, for, for for an episode, and, like, the girls will be in bikinis, and it'll all, you know, be, like, volleyball, and hooray. And then this one is so silly for so long, and then the feels happen. Yeah. And That's you're like... A sharp outfit, Chad. <laughs> you could pierce the armor of an Imperial class Fire Nation freighter with that outfit, Chad. Because it's so sharp. <laughs> I love how useless she is, by the way, when it's yeah, anything exactly. besides battle. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. perfect at everything. Why can't I get a boy? Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's clear up the Steven Universe spoilers, and yep. then I can go into, like, fancy. Oh, yeah, we should... Uh, you can go to the Twitch page, and it should probably... Um, yeah. 
Yeah, no, we can. I don't think we're going to be talking about like the spoiler part long enough. Yeah. Um. So how does it again? I have so seen... okay. Here's what here's what I really did like about that episode. Now, when I first started watching the the play episode, yeah, uh, I was initially being like, "Come on, you can't just drop that last episode and then go into a filler what one." Was the one before, the one that? before it was uh, Sardonyx, for fuck's sake! Like, oh, I thought we okay. We've switched back to yes. Yeah, okay, we're, sorry. Yeah, we're back on Steven. <laughs> okay, yes. we're back on Steven. Yes. Um, like you can't drop Sardonyx yes. on us and then put the fucking play thing in here. Like, are you giving, yeah. Are you kidding me right now? Um. So what I really did like about that is it gave you a peek into how this universe functions. Yeah. In that. Um, the settlers for this time in, like, pioneer days, so we're talking, like, what, 1700s. 1800s, 1700, mm-hmm. late yeah. 1700s, uh, were not only saved by what is probably the rose, garnet, pearl, amethyst fusion. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, also is very obviously what the temple is of there. Um, yeah. The, the, right. the, for a the second, is... for a little while, I thought it was a diamond fusion, mm-hmm. but no, it's very obviously yeah. that. Upon... Yeah, which is why all the rooms there, yeah. each one is based on one of their uh, yeah. one of their gems. And Stephen's room is located right where his stone would be yeah. on the house. Aww. Aww. Of course, uh, of course it is, because of course it is. Of course. Um, so. I love that it's showing you now, like, you know, at some point, like, maybe it was the same Earth up until 1600 or right. so. Yep. And then while people were, like, exploring and maybe stumbling upon, uh, you know, the hollowing out... By the way... Okay, I'll, sorry, I'll get back to that. Uh, while they were exploring and stumbling upon, they warned them, you know, being like, you know, this area is not safe. <laughs> we're actually, like, doing battle with each other here. Maybe this place is not save. a place of honor. <laughs> yeah. To quote one of my favorite things ever, which we'll get into later. Um, and they decided to stay there anyway, so, like, the gems have been Bidalbio. there <laughs> for a long-ass time, which also maybe is why they don't seem that upset when they're just like, hey, maybe you should stop smashing our stores with your giant weapons. Oh, well. Yeah. No one's calling the police. No one's doing anything. Yeah, well... Uh, I don't the, think there the, is a police. Well, I mean, actually, the, we got our very first mention of the police in the motel episode. Right. I'm going, yes. I'm going off to meet a man. An internet man. If I'm not back in an hour, call the police. Yep. That was the first one. That's, yep. the, that's our very first indication that there is oh, some no. manner of authority. It was Cardo- Sardonic's Keystone Onion, then the play. Yeah. Right. Still, okay. They yeah, dealt. Still. They dealt. At least Amethyst was talking about it, and they were trying to mm-hmm. deal with the gems' relationships in the previous yeah. one. Yeah. This one just really seemed like filler out of nowhere. Yep. Yeah. Um, However, and um, uh, okay, Keystone. So it gave us. It gave us a glimpse into like maybe it was the same sort of Earth that we know up mm-hmm. until like the late 1700s, and yeah. then the gem showed up, um, or they were there, you know, all the time, and this is just when their battle began, or the gem. Yeah. Uh, harvesting started. Yeah. What I thought was really interesting is I was just kind of picking random episodes while I was working on comics the other day, and I picked uh, the Keep Beach City Weird one. And <laughs> right at the end of it, I didn't even realize it as Ronaldo's ranting, everything he says is correct, <laughs> and you would never have known it because it's so early in the series. Mm-hmm. But as they're walking away, he's just like, no, you don't understand. It's the Diamond Authority. They've all shown up. They're hollowing out the earth. <laughs> It just sounds like he's. It sounds like he's ranting crazy nonsense. Right. Of, oh, of course. But that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Oh my god. Like this is. Sorry, Steven Universe is going to replace Arrested Development, in most amount of just batshit crazy foreshadowing, laid oh, yeah. super early, right across the board. Like. Yeah. Absolutely. The the Onion episode was super weird like yeah but uh, I was happy to see gals brought in to yeah. uh, to compliment the guys the uh, the acronym for gals which they don't give us in the episode but actually exists is gals against lazy stereotypes awesome <laughs> which is great but I particularly love how jazzed Steven is about gals. Like, there's yeah. n- no hint of oh girl toys no, or anything no, like it's, that. It's like yeah. gals, yeah. explorer gal. Rebecca, yeah. <laughs> what was it? Is it Rebecca or is, am I just? Like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, at, at at any rate, like he's just super excited about yeah. gals. You know, invisible guy. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I loved Invisible Guy. Yeah. Yes, Night Valian points out, and Alex Stacy did as well, that uh, Steven Universe fandom is reaching Karen. homestuck level yeah. of craziness, and that yeah. is a lot of crazy. Yeah. Correct. Seriously. But, and it's, because I was explaining to a coworker who, like, we said, and I, I said to him, um, Steven Universe is kind of the answer to Adventure Time. It is for the people who couldn't get Adventure Time. Mm-hmm. They need a little bit more structure and explanation than Adventure Here Time. Here is Steven Universe, functionally the same thing. Ostensibly a kid's show, lots of silliness, actually a huge amount of depth, like, depth once you get into it. And I was telling him about how the very first episode I ever saw, like, completely, involved the main character spitting out a bunch of watermelon seeds that then become sentient version watermelon <laughs> versions of himself. <laughs> And they run around, and I was watching this, and then looking back at Ash and being like, what is this, even? And I love those shows where they're simple enough and beautiful <laughs> enough that kids will keep their interest in it, yeah. but only when you become an adult. Like, I yeah. actually feel a little bit bad for those kids that will go back and rewatch it and be like, <gasps> yeah, like but how then, much they miss. But then when you get to that episode in context... yeah. It's right after the one where he discovers that his spit is is, the, is, is healing spit. Healing spit and I magic. Had healing and I was spit. like, oh my god, oh my god, I get it. To to, uh, to go off of what you were saying about feeling bad for the kids that are going to go back and realize how much they missed. I feel the opposite. I feel great for those kids yeah. because, like, I go back to shows that I watched when I was a kid, and it's so disappointing how many of them don't hold up. You know, like, when I was a kid, it's like, oh man, Thundercats. And now I'll go back yeah. and watch an original episode of Thundercats and go, oh my god, I watched this. Have you guys seen Inside Out? Oh, no, yeah. I, I, we had plans to. Uh, Jaren and Telly were in town not too long ago, and our plan was to go see Inside Out the oh. night that she got in. But we had written down the time wrong, so oh. we were actually half an hour late when we got oh. there. But I still um, really want to. Oh my god, if you want to, let me know and I'll go with you. Yes. It'll be the reverse... Oh no, it will be the exact same as Mad Max. But it'll... Anyway. I learned how to play the lava song. I mean, um, really, it's cute. I, uh... And, but the, that's the thing I feel similarly about Inside Out, and I won't spoil it, but the thing about this film film is that it teaches kids an incredibly important lesson that I have struggled to learn as an adult about the nature of emotional, like, how we react to things and the importance of the full emotional spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, it, it teaches, you know, I've spent a lot of my adult life working with this concept that negative emotions are not negative in and of themselves. Mm -hmm. And Pixar comes along and does that as a kid's film. And these kids are going to grow up having watched this film and having accepted this lesson as surely as I accepted the lesson, granted a little twisted, but as surely as I accepted that bookworms were amazing and from Beauty and the Beast, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they will have accepted this lesson and it's going to, they will be able to look back on this film and, you know, be able to reference it. It's going to, it's amazing. Like, mm. so yeah, similar with Steven Universe, although not as profound yeah. because Pixar feels. Um, it's a really good time for children's media. It yes. is. Yeah. Because the the eighties and nineties kids are coming of age yeah. and and are taking the making, lessons they learned from what they watched and saying yeah. how how can we do this but make it you know relevant and yeah you know accessible and important yeah um, I recommend Inside Out it's I didn't cry a lot of people I understand where people would but uh, the Pixar films that make me cry are um, Up Wall-E and Toy Story three yeah. But uh, it did make me cry, but it's really, really, really good. And it is essentially Inside Out, We're Sorry for Cars 2. Yeah. <laughs> is the subtitle there. <clears throat> uh, oh, I, did, I did go back while I was super sick on Thursday night, I think. I was like, well, I'm miserable and my face hurts. I might as well watch Toy Story 3 again. <laughs> 
Yeah, I I recently made the mistake of like watching Wally. Uh, like I love this, Wally. So I, I love Wally too. It was just not a good time for me to be rewatching yeah. Wally. And I was like, oh, the thing this that was made, a bad idea. Okay, thing, so hang on before. Yeah. Sorry, just yeah. to interrupt. I've uh, taken your advice. I've. Uh, altered mm-hmm. the arms that have the uh, gauntlets yeah. or alternated them. And so I've got one smaller sh- sword, one bigger sword, one bigger shield, and one smaller sh- shield on each side. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the thing that made me cry with Wally, and I went to see Wally on a, 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 like a Sunday afternoon, and I was super hungover and really depressed, and I went all alone to the crappy little theater right near our university. Like, it's yeah. it's one of those... It's not an also... It's not a second-run theater. It's, university Heights? Yeah, yeah, University Heights. It's it's a pretty, you know... Yeah, it, it, no no stadium-style st- seating, so oh, if no, someone tosses it's in front of you, you're screwed. It's, you know. it's pretty dinky. Yeah. Um, but it was a, it was a Sunday afternoon showing a couple of weeks into yeah. it, so I w- it was like five people in the theater. Yeah. But the thing that got me about Wally and what made me burst into tears like spontaneously was the end credits. Oh yeah, yeah. Because for those who haven't seen it, like it's this beautiful story. Like the first third is essentially a Charlie Chaplin film with robots. It's perfect. The rest of it isn't bad either. And then the but you know, it ends with the humans returning to Earth and then the the end credits tell the epilogue, it tells the story yeah. of them through the history of art, and I just Which was so started cool. to cry. I was just like, this is amazing. It was so elegantly done. Uh, I cried at, yeah. at least six different parts or spots during that movie. Like, yeah. That yeah. is 110% like the Pixar movie that gets the most tears out of me. Yeah. yeah. And I watched it not too long ago, actually, um, on, a, on one of my writing days. Mm-hmm. And just like any time Brad went by me, I was tearing up at something else, and I'm yeah. like, "But did you, he just wants to hold her hand." Yes. <laughs> or, or, or when when Eve's uh, rewatch, like replaying her, yeah. her memory, offline yeah. memory from, yeah. and, and just watching like Wally hold, uh, hold the umbrella. umbrellas over her, yeah. and you yeah. know, yeah. oh gosh, can't um, handle it. Being struck by lightning. Yeah, and oh. I just, it's. Oh, it's so good, and you can tell it was made with so much love. Mm-hmm. Like as soon as it starts zooming in, and like Hello Dolly is such a, it's such a silly choice because the that movie yeah. in and of itself is kind of awful, yeah. but it's so rinky dinky and so cute, and like yeah, you just it really really well done. Um, I love that while he's playing it off of an old iPod, yeah, which is so crazy. And he just there's so it. many so many Mac references. Like yeah. they did yeah. that with Mac, like his boot up sound is the Mac boot up. But but Eve is way more consciously like OS X and later yeah. Mac yeah. design. Um, yes. A lot of people, one of my favorite film uh, critics, whose name is Tim Brayton, and I highly recommend you look him up because he's brilliant. Um, in his review of Wally, he's like, the first third of Wally is perfect. Stumbles the tiniest bit when it gets to the human bit, but only because, in comparison to the nearly silent film sort of romance mm-hmm. thing they have going on, it just can't be as good, but it's still really good. Um, the whole Define Dancing is sequence is is gorgeous, mm-hmm. and uh, I love the moment when he gets thrown into the trash, and they have the wall A's. Yeah, they're, they're really giant uh, yeah. trash units. Yeah, and what really got me, I didn't notice it until I watched it this time, besides, like, the... You mind? No, no. Uh, besides the... Uh, Sigourney Weaver computer that's working against them. Yeah. Um, totally didn't realize it was Sigourney Weaver, by the way, until I rewatched it, but mm, it's Sigourney yeah. Weaver. Um, there's no stupid, like, evil character, mm-hmm. and even the computer itself, like, someone programmed it a long time ago to yeah. be like, hey... Fred Willard that's, programmed yeah, it. Yeah. That's probably not a good idea, yeah. so don't go back there, just live out here, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. But, like, it's this one little, like, thing that they have to overcome... Mm-hmm. Every single other thing in the movie is working together, mm-hmm. and it's so refreshing after seeing like a movie like Jurassic World, where they just threw in evil people for yeah. no reason. Like yeah. you already have giant dinosaurs, you don't need the mustache well, like, swirling the, villain. The antagonist of Wally is apathy. 
yeah. which is like not what you get out of your standard Hollywood films or even Disney for that matter. Like Disney's always got yeah. you know a villain, and Wally is like it's not really a villain. It's just you know a commentary on you know the uh, yeah. I, I don't want to call it the laziness of people, but the uh, the tendency of people to not want to the get stag- involved stagnation. or yeah, or yeah. to not want to uh, to deal with harder issues. Yeah. You know, it's just like, oh, no, it's it's too much. It's too hard. Um, I made the mistake of going to see Up the day after I got dumped by my boyfriend. Uh, that was a bad decision. Yeah, um, God. The, just the y'all. first three minutes of that movie breaks that, my heart. That was what did Every it. Because time. I went, I had seen the previews. I was like, oh, my God, talking dog. Yeah. This will I, uh, be an awesome movie. And to be fair, Doug the Dog is still one of my favorite things Squirrel. because it perfectly yeah. encapsulates yeah. It's what it is to be a dog. So, like, so I have great. just met you, and I, I love, love you. you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but yeah, those first five minutes, man. Oh, they're... Damn! <laughs> I, uh, by Damn! The, by the end of those first five minutes, I was crying, and like the little five-year-old girl sitting next to me, not, uh, not yeah. someone I know, but just there with her family, yeah, yeah. looked at me. She's like... <sighs> Man up. <laughs> Five year old girl told me to man up <laughs> while I was watching up. And I was like, God damn it, little no. bit. Like, you will understand how beautiful this is when you're <laughs> old, and then you're going to feel really bad. It might make me feel bad. Yeah. See, when I went to go see it, I was trying to tell myself to pull the fuck together because mm-hmm. it's five minutes into the movie, you shouldn't be crying. And no, then, of course, should. it goes silent a moment after the tears are rolling. Yeah. And I'm like, Holding my breath, yeah. trying not, but I hear from around the theater. <laughs> it was yeah. like yes. Yeah. Oh, um, man. Oh. And then yeah, and then I rewatched Toy Story three, and I can tell you the exact moment because um, we've all seen Toy Story mm-hmm. three, right? Yeah. Okay, there's a shot when Andy's car rolls up to Bonnie's house, mm-hmm. and it cuts on uh, to the tire stopping, yeah. and that's when I started to cry this time. I was just because I knew it was coming, and I knew this whole thing was happening, and. Um, and I posted something to Facebook to the effect of, like, this is how I know I'm dumb. I'm in the midst of, like, the sinus portion of my cold, so the whole front oh, of my no. face is killing me. And this is when I decided to watch Toy Story 3, idea. which would make me cry. Um, but, and, but yeah, that whole... The first time I watched it, I was holding... I, I still have... Uh, when I was born, my dad went down to the gift shop at the hospital as dads do, Mm -hmm. and bought this stuffed dog, which he brought up to the hospital room, and which I later on named Puppy because I was a baby and Mm -hmm. not particularly creative at that point. But I still have Puppy, and I was lying in bed watching this film and holding him and (laughs) sobbing. (laughs) And, Uh. but yeah, and somebody actually said, like, no, it should have ended with, you know, Andy keeping these toys around for his kids to play with. And while I understand the sentiment there, and if they had known they were going to make Toy Story 4, they probably would have done that. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important that kids learn that sometimes goodbyes are really important, mm-hmm. and they're going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I You're talking to somebody who used to cry, and this is like parent, parent hack 101. If your child becomes inconsolable af- when whenever Mary Poppins leaves at the end of the film, rewind it to the beginning. <laughs> And they would do that. I would I would just sob uncontrollably until my parents... And then my parents would rewind the tape to the beginning and be like, Look, she's back! Oh, and, then I would, and then I would calm down. I never thought about that. It's yeah. totally just the same. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. You guys have seen Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Because, yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, if I ever have kids, that one they're growing up on for sure. It's like, when in doubt, magical suits of armor fighting Nazis. Yeah. It's weird watching it now because, like, when I was a kid watching it, it's like, wow, Angela Lansbury has always been old. But watching it now, it's like, wow, Angela, Lan- that's the youngest I've ever seen Angela yeah. Lansbury. She was super young. It, the same thing's happening with uh, Star Trek Next Gen Season 2 with uh, Dr. Pulaski. Because right. I watched. 
watching it when I was a kid, like when yeah. I was eight or nine, when it was first on, I was like, wow, she's so old. And now, now that I'm watching it for the podcast, uh, there she is. I'm like, wow, she is way younger than I thought she was. I mean, she's still not. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Uh, she's still not yeah. young, but she's like, like you know, when I was when I was eight, you know, she's like, oh, like she's like a grandma or a right. great grandma age. And now like, no, like oh, so she, she's like maybe her mid to late fifties. Like tops. yeah, Pulas- uh I wouldn't even say that because she was in her thirties when she was on the original series in the sixties. Oh, really? She yeah. was on. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah, yeah, she was. Uh, I understand why people hate Pulaski, but I am one of those weirdos who actually really enjoyed the first and second season of TNG because while they're dumb, <laughs> they were never boring. No, ever. No. I did. I never skipped an episode. Whereas, as I got further and further, and I very famously stalled out midway through season four, I think, of TNG, and I've never gone back. As I got into the supposed really, really good... season four. Okay, so maybe I'll join you. Um, But maybe as, like, but as I got into the supposed really good parts, Mm -hmm. I found that there were more boring episodes that I was like, I have no interest in this, I'm skipping this part. Um, but seasons one and two, even with their faults, were really entertaining. And hilarious. Right? I think with the... And, 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 and just with the putting up, uh, with Riker just putting his foot on everything. Oh yeah, just gotta, gotta, get, gotta get that leg Although up I think I've reached the point where he's uh, severely injured his back, because I've noticed that his chair antics haven't been as a <laughs> gymnastic anymore. Mm. Um... I think uh, with Pulaski, they were clearly trying to get a, a, a Dr. McCoy feel. Like, mm-hmm. It's like, we need a Dr. McCoy for this. And Dr. McCoy works less well in Next Gen than he did in the original series. Because yeah. the original series was much more frontiery. It was you know? wagon train to the exactly. stars. Exactly. Whereas Next Gen, everything is so comfortable. Like, yeah. you know, everything's even lighting, nice carpeting. Like They have a budget. That's yeah, the other but, thing about Korra. Okay, before they I start outlining oh, this... Man. Yeah, yeah. Are we happy with this? I Is think it? so. Yeah, I think it looks I great. Think it's, Even though yeah. we can't see Garnet's gems at all. It's uh, yeah. I, I assume they're coming. Yeah. Well, they're, they're right. covered by the swords. Yeah. Is the thing. Yeah. So, oh, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Well, she want to put them happy? on the inside of her wrists or something, but I think it's to have to stay in the same spot. <laughs> uh, Laser Beast mm, yeah. Fury, who wants to watch a cartoon about people crying? <laughs> uh, we do. I like the uh, adults it... crying about cartoons a lot with wine. Yeah, that's... yeah. We, we talked about Speaking it last of week. Speaking of bartender, uh, please. Thank you. I think someone mentioned last week, you know, about the uh, the sad breakfast friends, the, uh, the cartoon <laughs> show in Steven Universe that only Steven gets, and everyone else is just like, what? Yeah, it's Steven Universe. Yeah, it is Steven Universe in. I like that. You're the missing a really good episode. Not no, really. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh and my god, course, Mega course, Cynics is literally crying breakfast friends! <laughs> <laughs> well, crying alcohol friends, but close yes. enough. For and, some people, alcohol is breakfast. And of course, you know, you know, the crying Thank breakfast you. friends episode is mirroring exactly what's going on in the episode. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm sorry I lied to you. Yeah. Will you forgive um, me? Of course I'll forgive you. <laughs> I love the end of that, where it's just like, you know, it can't always end like on a happy note, or I wish it, I wish yeah. a real life ended like cartoons did, yeah. and it just ends. Oh. Mm. Yeah. And or at the end of the play episode, it's like, <laughs> it's like I don't remember there being a campaign slogan at the end of the, sorry, you don't have to justify everything in Art Pearl. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just have to make the audience happy, which is why you always end with a joke. Yeah. Uh, one of my guilty pleasures is American Dad. I uh, love it. Thank you. Which and the AV Club has also vindicated. I um. Oh my God. We have had a. Uh, AV Club. We have had a, a request for draw draw crying alcohol friends please. <laughs> <laughs> I could probably do that. We could probably be breakfast foods cry, uh, crying over alcohol. Um. But uh. Because I, I, while I was sick, I spent time reading the AV Club reviews of the most recent seasons of Family Guy, and they reflected, and several times they're like, American Dad is better, has done this before. But there's one episode of American Dad, fairly recent one, that um, they uh, there's a football reference, and then at the very end, Klaus is like, well, but the problem is that, like, the Patriots and the Redskins have never played each other, 
uh, on Thanksgiving ever, and everyone was like, "What is? What does that have to do with anything?" And he's like, "Well, they're gonna ask at Comic Con. <laughs> like, we, <laughs> uh, we need to have an answer for this." And then the episode just ends. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so yeah, no, I I have watched uh, through American Dad many because it's for a dumb for like a dumb cartoon show. It's quite clever at times, and it's never as derivative or like uh he gave himself mean. enough material because with family guy i feel like they i want to say they peaked at like season seven ish um, yeah i was just watching through some episodes of season 10 today and the jump from seven to ten was just huge in my opinion as far as just i can't remember season seven specifically well, but uh, we watched a few episodes from season season seven recently because mm-hmm. uh it has three kings in it and that was when right. i wanted to show brad right and then i just kind of kept watching i'm just like man season seven was great yeah and then i looked through the list of season eight and i'm like i've seen all those and yep. i look through ten and i'm just like oh i haven't seen some of these and i started watching ten and Minus that, there's one episode in it where Meg just loses it on all of her family, yeah. which is phenomenal, yes. by the way. But everything after that, I'm just like, this really sucks. There's one And called... I feel like American Dad gave them so much more because he's got yeah. the CIA thing. Um, the they've got the family thing, thing with uh, Francine. The alien thing. Like, they've got so many different places yeah. to go. Yeah, mm-hmm. and because they didn't have the throw jokes at, like, they didn't have the manatee jokes, they didn't have this yeah. throw whatever at the wall and see what sticks, they had to do something of a more narrative thing, so it has its surreal moments, like, technically since season, like, five or six or something, save us! No. Um, so technically since season five or six or something, all of American Dad has taken place inside heaven. Like, inside right, Stan right, right. Smith's conception of heaven. Um, if you take any of it to be canon, but... Which you can't, really. Which but. you can't, really. But And this is something, like, I'm really good about humor. I'm, I've got a really, really good... Um, like, I've got a really, really wide net for what is offensive. You know? Like, there's a lot of things that definitely push the line and I see, you know, but there, there are like a lot of things where people get really high and mighty about it. I'm like, eh. But I actually was thinking about this a lot yesterday and I figured out that I'm willing to take a lot more abusive, stupid shit mm-hmm. the stupider the character is. Yes. Because I feel like that's kind of a narrative saying like, this character's stupid, that's why he's saying this. Because I'm yes. like, how can I be a stickler for like, you know, I don't want to watch that, it's really offensive and racist yeah. and yeah. like sexist. But then I also watched South Park and Metalocalypse yes. and yeah. right. uh, Family Where, Guy and American Dad yeah. because they're stupid. Like, Kevin yeah, Smith like, talks about that uh, in one of his uh, you know evenings with Kevin Smith. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone was challenging him on chasing Amy, right? Uh, and specifically about the uh, the character played by Jason Lee and his views, and he's mm-hmm. like, and how you know gross they are. And she's like, yeah, but I gave that dialogue and those views to the stupidest character yeah. in the movie thus you know you know yeah like deflating that entire thing like yeah you know like i am you know it was not my intention to upset you or offend you but at some point you know i have to be able to you know express these not uncommon views that uneducated people have in a work of fiction yeah and do it in a way that most people will understand is commentary on that uh, yeah. on that viewpoint by giving it to the character that we're not supposed to fall in line with. Yeah, but the thing about and and I really liked the first several seasons of Family Guy, and there are episodes from the later seasons like Back to the Pilot I recently rewatched, and that one's amazing where they go back to the like. Brian and Stewie travel back in time to the pilot of the show and <laughs> the, the kind of time travel comment thing. on the meta narrative, and it's it's great. But w- while I was, um, and I also like Lady Thimble Trimmer, used to be super angered by South Park, and then I actually sat down to watch a lot of it, and I chilled out, and I I, I feel differently. Like South Park does it really well. Mm-hmm. Family Guy and South Park aim for similar things, where they take pot shots at absolutely everybody, they point out absolutely everybody's bullshit, South Park 
does it successfully a lot more, and I feel better mm-hmm. than Family Guy does. Although, fa- and and while I like Family Guy has a lot of its moments, and the first I'm going to say five or six seasons are quite funny. Mm-hmm. Towards the end, because I once it ended up on Netflix, I started watching through all of it. Um, the later stuff that I hadn't seen. S- there, what really got to me, and again, I want to stress, I don't tend to be offended by a lot of things, and I'm Jewish, and we have a sense of humor about ourselves that is very acerbic, but there were things that really started to get to me. Mm-hmm. Like, there was one, uh, there were two jokes in particular that stood out that really kind of, like, you know, stuck in me, which was one where they, um, when they turn, when they accidentally reverse time Mm -hmm. and the way that they tell that time is being reversed is that they see Mort walking backwards in the street and he takes a coin out of his pocket and puts it on the street Mm -hmm. and then walks and they're like, oh my God, we've gone back in time. And I was like, okay. And then the other one where, um, Lois takes a job as a, uh, phone sex operator and he calls and says and like has her read out the contents of her wallet and Mm. like there were those were two things where i was like okay i definitely get poking fun at everyone it was the first time that i'd felt kind of uncomfortable about the um just the degree to which they were Mm -hmm. taking it i had a i had a moment like that actually watching family early, early today and uh, we're gonna wrap up this part of the conversation mm-hmm. momentarily because we have oh, yeah. a break time. and then take a break um but there was an episode that i watched in season 10 where brian does magic mushrooms mm-hmm. and uh stewie okay. comes towards the camera at the end of it and he's just like we talked a lot about drugs today uh if you'd like some more information about drugs go to your local library there's probably a guy standing behind it that you can buy them from good night everybody mm-hmm. that was the first moment that i'm just like shit if I have kids, I'm not showing this to them. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, damn it. Like, that's 100%. I've had so many moments recently where, like, I am a grown-up. Yeah. Like, Fuck. And that was the moment for me where I was like, wow. Like, I definitely get poking fun at, you know, there's the a lot of stereotypes. I get poking fun at that. And, like, there is this weird thing where Jews, we poke fun at ourselves anyway. But these two moments stood out for me because I was like, wow, people will see that and it will reaffirm their yeah. beliefs that are incorrect. Yeah. And I was like, damn. Okay. So, and again, entirely subjective, mm-hmm. but that Sorry. was one person. You had something to say like five minutes ago when we interrupted you. Oh, uh, <laughs> when we were talking about Family Guy uh, and uh, South Park, uh, one of the things I was thinking was that for me, part of the, like, the end of the line for Family Guy for me was the South Park parody of Family Guy, which... I don't think we saw that. Oh, oh right. no, the South Park parody of Family... Yes. Yeah. For which, a second there, I thought Family Guy parody of South Park, where I was like, I didn't see that one, but yeah. Yeah. The man where, where, joke. Yeah, yeah joke. and where, you know, South Park pretty much uh, eviscerated Family Guy to the point where, like, they laid out the formula so perfectly, and, yeah. you know, that, you know, it was impossible to watch Family Guy for me after that, because I was like... The manatees have picked out a thing. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Uh, But uh, beyond that, uh, I tried to rewatch Family Guy recently, uh, wondering, like, I was like, oh, well, you know, I stopped it around about, uh, I can't remember, like, volume four with the DVDs. I don't know what season that is, because the DVDs don't do it by season. They do it in volumes. I hate that! Yeah, that's annoying. So, at any rate, I was like, well, I guess, you know, I'll just watch through it on Netflix. And I ended up just falling off of the series at exactly the same point I had previously, which yeah. was round about the time the episode where uh, Chris go ends up living in like the rainforest with a uh, with a, oh, like, yeah, a, a, tribe, a native yeah. tribe and whatnot. Round about that time, right. that that episode and like the episode where they're on the run and like yeah. you know they do that Tie Fighter chase in the uh, in the sewers and whatever. That was around about where it lost me. I was just like, I'm just not really having yeah. fun watching this anymore. And yeah. then I tried jumping ahead to, you know, I was like, well, I wonder what they're doing now. And the first thing I thought was like, oh, so here's Stewie and Brian traveling through time. Yeah. And that apparently is like now a, a standard plot point in oh, the show is that they have a time machine. Yeah. And this particular episode was 
uh, essentially they had gone back and stopped the European settling of the uh, of North America. So now it was, uh, you know, it was modern day America, except that it was all Native the, American, yeah, Native jokes. Americans, and and I was just like, who got a nosebleed? Sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm curious. Was it me? Was it me? No. It's not the drawing, no. is it? Sorry, Native Americans. Yeah. And and I was like, ooh, this is I don't, I don't mm -hmm. know. I fe I'm feeling uncomfortable watching this. I get what the what they're trying to say, but I feel like they're really like it's really clumsy yeah. and it would be easy for a lot of people to not get the joke or like you were saying this is the kind of humor where people that have these things are going to say hey they're on the same page as me look at us together yeah. laughing at these people yeah. you know reaffirming each other all right we're going to come back to this yes. kind of conversation in a couple minutes and after the break we're going to take you down our own rabbit hole of Steven Universe theories yes See you in a few minutes, guys. Bye-bye.
Dun dun dun. Hi. Hello. Hello. All right, folks. What up? So, I'm gonna let you guys decide for yourself whether or not fan theorizing is a form of spoilers. Eh. But that's what we're gonna do. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, if, even if you touch on something that's gonna come up, it's not like you have foreknowledge of it. You've just, yeah. you've just, you, you're, you're, you're being Sherlock here. You're, you're putting together the pieces, and you're saying this is perhaps how it's going to roll out. And it's a weather forecast. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I have seen, like, uh, I in my falling down the rabbit hole of YouTube, uh, Steven Universe fan theories. Which I have not done yet in terms of YouTube, but I... I don't suggest it. Because <laughs> I have a job that requires yeah. somewhat 9 to 5 I, I, I do my, I And you'll do find my... yourself sitting at your desk being like, yes, it's all making... You'll be Ronaldo, basically, with like photos yeah. everywhere and stuff. But I have paper. to... I have to do I this. I had a Google Doc open. But I have to do this. I have to do this. Really? Okay. Um, I have to do this. So this is Wednesday at 10.30 in the morning, so I'm homesick in bed. Not asleep, but in bed. <laughs> and I was like, okay, um... You know, and Ash texts me and says, I just came up with my own SU fan theory. Yeah. And I said, oh. And she said, want to hear it? And I said, you know I do. And then this is this is what ends up happening. And you're not meant to read this. Yeah. This is just an, an approximation of the length yeah. of, what, of what happened <laughs> afterward. Okay. You'll see that? Yeah. <laughs> it just keeps going. <laughs> It's really good. Too. It's really good, but I, I was like, I "This more is about impressive." This is like on a like after a bender of of some kind of stimulant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah text wall. For it's really sure. it's really just me like desperately wanting to talk to one of the people who's mm -hmm. like involved with the writing, being like, you know, is this correct? Also, could you do this? Yeah. Also, what about this? A, also, a is this the, important? Uh, a lot of the yeah. storyboard artists and stuff are on uh, Tumblr and they take do questions. The, well, and the, the apparently, there's one guy who will yeah, post Matt something. Who will post um, he will post images the day before a, an episode mm -hmm. goes up where it'll just be the title and an image, and sometimes it's very much associated with the episode, and sometimes it's the complete opposite yeah. <laughs> of what's going to be. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you go to <laughs> Rebecca Sugar's Tumblr, uh, she posts all the MP3s for the music yeah. without nice. it being interrupted by yeah. show stuff. There's awesome, a, um, because super awesome. I would really like to play Stronger Than yeah. You on there's my a, radio uh, show. There's a YouTube we channel have, that... Uh, that repost them with the lyrics and the uh, ukulele tabs in the nice. uh, in the descriptions. Um, if you want to search her on Tumblr, she is Rebecca S. Mm -hmm. And her uh, you'll know it's her because her profile picture is a black and white line drawing of a uh, lapis. It looks like it might be I, her. I don't know. It, this is a compelling thing. I shut down my Tumblr account because true story, I overdosed on social justice Tumblr. Oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> And then proceeded because what I ended what ended up happening was that I got a Tumblr, and then proceeded because I am involved somewhat in many different social justice things. Mm -hmm. um, I proceeded to follow a bunch of you know yeah. shit that awful peep awful dudes say or people, but mostly yeah. dudes say on OkCupid okay accounts, and then yeah. um, you know a lot of social justice stuff and anti-racism stuff and, and then like my dashboard became so mired in misery that I yeah. just shut the whole thing down while totally I'm uh, ranting do you want to sketch for a little bit yeah sure okay. uh, yeah I, uh, I had to stop doing a bunch of stuff on Tumblr because while I'm happy that Tumblr educated me in a bunch of stuff that I was just totally yeah. oblivious to before and I'm happy about that at, at some point you know, you, you, you need just read to the take a break for like, self care. Exactly, and at some yeah. point, you know, like I watch it, I was like, okay, now now we're just looking for stuff to get, uh, mm -hmm. just a, like to be incensed by, yeah. uh, and Sorry. it's not it's not a healthy That's way to live. Want. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I'm just like I know yes. you usually hold something. There is such a thing <laughs> as taking a step back <laughs> for self care, even if you are an ally. Now we go on to the awesome fan theory stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> <I'm gonna laughs> okay, so... One of these cards. For... My first idea, I don't know why... Okay, first of all, I have almost nothing to back any of this up. This is just how it's unfolding in my head. But it's weirdly 
weirdly makes a lot of sense. Okay, like a so lot of sense. as we said on the last stream, I am kind of. Uh, I'm not drawing. Just whatever you want. Yeah, whatever I want. Sad, okay. sad crying Megasonix friends. <laughs> yes. Sad drinking Megasonix friends. Sad drinking friends. <laughs> um, so, as I mentioned on the last stream when we were talking about Steven Universe theories, Buster's got to be in there, let's be honest. Uh, it's kind of a fan theory that's wafting around that Rose was Pink Diamond mm -hmm. yes. in collaboration with uh, three other diamonds on Homeworld. Um, Blue, white, and yellow. Yes. Um, I'm actually wondering if white, who I'm just going to refer to as Diamond, <laughs> because I hate saying white. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of speaking of social justice uh, stuff. <laughs> I'm actually under the assumption that uh, Diamond was actually maybe the only Diamond, and that the other ones are in the Diamond Authority, and therefore get the uh, inadvertent... <laughs> Sadrini the Diamond first. Authority is hollowing out the planet. Exactly. I think Ronaldo's right. I think 100% every bullshit like Team theory... Parado is blasting up again. Love it. <laughs> um, yes. I think that every like little crackpot theory at the end of the episode that Ronaldo has where he says, it all makes sense, blah, is going to be correct because after watching that one episode where what he said at the end was 110% correct... So do you think snakes are going to come yes, back Yes, I do. Yeah. I really okay. do. And I never noticed... Sneeple? Sneeple. Sneeple. Okay. Uh, I never noticed mm. before that their fucking money has diamonds on it. It does, yes. And if I recall as well, snakes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so... Uh, either diamond is the only diamond and that what, is what makes up the diamond authority, or diamond is a title given to leaders slash royalty in the home world. Mm -hmm. So Rose Quartz can still be Rose Quartz, and that might be why we haven't heard from like more common gems. Like We're picking out things like Sardonyx when we haven't seen Topaz or uh, Citrine or something like, you know, yeah. those very common gems. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking that Diamond is either a title or a uh, clear diamond. We'll go with clear. Yeah. Is the only diamond. Um, and I don't think that Clear Diamond is around anymore. No, um, I somehow doubt. In the mural that you see as they go into the uh, pyramid trap thing, uh, there's one where it looks like there is a uh, gem that's like stuck inside their gem with a bunch of hands reaching towards it. Okay. Um, it's on the far left of the mural. Um... And I think that that was put on there as, like, a either clear diamond was defeated by blue or something. Like, I feel like that's people reaching towards it for mm -hmm. guidance, but it's a gem that has retreated permanently inside their gem or yeah. is dead. Um, I feel like... I think color plays into it a lot. And yes, I hate, that was... I hate making this about color, but I'm sorry. <laughs> Speaking again of social justice. I know, I feel terrible. Listen, people like you no, make it about color. Just, yeah. I think this was my favorite. Wait, hold but, on, where was it? Um, bear with me on this. Yeah, I think this is the thing. was like, but I love thinking over things. And yet, But yes, I am thinking that the type or hardness of the gems has less to do with it than their color. And I just made it about race in a way that makes me feel bad. Was one yeah. of the texts I received. <laughs> And my response was, meh, stuff is color-coded anywhere. <laughs> like, everywhere, basically. But yes, anyway, but sorry. The, the, the reason I thought it had to do with it, mainly, it kind of makes sense um, as to who's mad at who. So, Rose being pink diamond, we're just going to call that red. <laughs> uh, there's blue, there's yellow, which are the primary colors, and there's white. Mm -hmm. Which is why I feel like white was probably, or clear, was, uh, like, high commander and for a minute, I actually thought that maybe, like, Clear Diamond didn't actually exist, and it was the combination of the other three. Yeah. Well, but that's... And that's the thing, is that um, all colors mixed together... The like, statue in the temple is the five gems fuse. There's no way around that. It 100% is. If you look at the, where the gems are on the temple... Five crystal gems? Four. Yes, four. Sorry. My Which is the five. Yeah. Um, but all... No, five, because Ruby and Sapphire count as one. Okay, Sorry. fair enough. Um, but uh, 
in terms of science, all colors fused together creates white light. Yeah. Exactly. So I was wondering if maybe the diamond authority is the three of them mm. and they make clear diamond. Yeah, that would make sense. But it wouldn't explain why on the floor of a uh, Peridot ship, um, why there was still a white symbol. If yeah. they only have the two back at Homeworld. Like, right. they've clearly taken Rose off of it, so I don't know if it's maybe just a... Maybe they haven't told the other Homeworld gems oh! that... Oh! Ma- yeah. And Jasper didn't know that Rose is gone. Well, because oh! he was looking for her. Exactly. Or she was looking for her. Dun, I've, dun, dun. The first, again, I was spoiled, so the first thing I ever saw of Jasper was just the stronger than you clip, and that was it. And so, when you see Jasper not knowing that all diamond, or all gems identify as female... They have female kind of. pronouns. They have female pronouns. Um, I assume that Jasper was male. And this is not the first... I'm, like, so humiliated. This is not the first time that I've accidentally... No, it's fine. Actually, I've... Misgendered someone from their voice. I, I was... Actually, a few things that I read on Steven Universe while I was down the rabbit hole, a lot of people were referred to Jasper as he. Uh, yeah, that a, this is that's a completely different story, but long story short, I uh, there was a really awesome album uh, called Must Be Tuesday by a nerd, and the whole thing was super nerdy, and for Buffy fans, understand Must Be Tuesday is a thing, um, by someone who had a very feminine-sounding voice because he is trans, and I did not realize this until I'd been playing the album for a couple of weeks and came upon and, like, listened to one of the songs where he specifically was like, this is my coming out story. I identify as male. And I was like, oh, shit. I... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, anyway. Okay. So Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I am 100% convinced that uh, yellow... Well, obviously, yellow diamond exists. Yes. Um... I am personally convinced that Rose was pink diamond and, you know, in the interest of, like, going into the uh, prismatic color scheme here, we're going to call her red Mm -hmm. as just a way for this to keep going. Yep. Um, And that at some point, something happened on Homeworld. I'm guessing it's something to do with the fact that they started creating gems by hollowing out planets. Um, Hence why... A lot of gems are not only smaller, but also subservient to the other ones. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, why Pearl, I believe, was made. Obviously, Amethyst was made. I'm not... Ooh. Pearl, that that's something that came up recently in the Stephen Bomb, is our first, uh, our, our first indication that, uh, well, other than our speculation, that uh, Pearl is a servant class, is she refers to herself as just a Pearl. Right. Yes. She doesn't refer to herself as... Um, I'm just Pearl. And it's in just, this, just a, a Pearl. pearl. In you Sworn know, to the Sword, in her song, she says, uh, deep down, we both know, uh, we know uh, we weren't built for fighting. Um, which. I want to see this Twitter <laughs> status. Can you take that mouse below you and mm. click on that link? Because apparently T Pain thought that Jasper was male too, which means that T Pain watches TV universe. <laughs> I think a lot of you have a lot of celebrities do. What? <laughs> Fantastic! Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm so um, happy. Just go back onto the screen, it's fine. Okay. I'm so happy. Anyway, sorry. Um, so let's say for a moment that they're split into four or three. Yes. Kind of uh, leadership roles of pink diamond, blue diamond, yellow diamond, and possibly clear diamond. Um. They all kind of have like. Uh, Continue. I'm they not. all kind of have a bunch of gems subservient to them that either they created themselves by hollowing out planets or they created on their home world. Yeah. Um, which is why the reason I question whether or not White Diamond is around anymore is because Pearl. Pearls are usually white mm-hmm. with like a different color scheme kind of yeah. like in their color. But the most precious ones are. Pure white, yes. Pure white, yeah. Um, funny story, I, I mentioned this at our uh, accessories exchange. Um, I have a bunch of pearl earrings that I bought for like two bucks, and I'm just like, well, they're obviously plastic. Yeah. But we found out they're not plastic, they're just gray pearls. Yeah. Um, the thing with pearls is that their value is completely based off of color and luster. And yeah. It has nothing to do with whether or not they're real. Yeah. So gray pearls are worth less than fake pearls, because they're gray. 
Yeah, I have a river pearl necklace that is actually garnet and gray. Um, combined together, like twisted together. That yeah, like but yeah. I'm not. I'm not convinced that uh, pearl was originally um, with Rose. I it leads me to believe that she was created under uh, Clear Diamond's authority. Hence the like uh, colorless yes yeah. of her um, and defected to Rose because yes. at one point Jasper calls her a defective pearl, and I think that was actually a reference to the fact that she was no longer loyal to where she was created yes. from. Which would make her not only a defector, but also, in her mind, defective. defective. Um, and this is why I bring color into this. Uh, Jasper gives Garnet a bunch of shit for fusing. And mm -hmm. that was, the only reason you beat me is because you're a fusion. A fusion is, like, just a th cheap tactic to make, to make a weak, weak gem stronger. stronger. Which is ridiculous, because why would you not want to be stronger? Right, so what I'm yeah. thinking is, is that fusion, um, even though it is a battle tactic, was actually looked down upon. Sorry. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you. Because either people saw it as, like, a unholy union, or, mm -hmm. like, you know, you should just be a strong gem, or you're a servant, that's the end of it. You know, like, the weaker you are, the more subservient you are. Um, but we've also seen that Lapis and Sapphire both have water and ice powers. Mm -hmm. Um, which leads me to believe that the empire that they come from actually has something to do with their powers. And I haven't really nailed down what, like, the pink power is or what the well, yellow power is. Well, rubies is, is fire. We may right. be able to extrapolate something from that, but we've never seen anything related to fire right. related to rose. And uh, Garnet yeah. hasn't really shown any of those abilities either, because, like, usually it's a weapon, but, like, they seem to have, like, powers beyond that, which leads me to believe that we haven't actually seen Lapis's weapon. That could just be a thing that she can do, because she's a powerful gem, right? Yeah. Um, but it leads me to believe that perhaps Sapphire and Lapis came from the same place, hence yeah. the color thing coming into play here. Um, and... Maybe, just maybe, because they fuse together so perfectly, and actually there's another video that uh, explained that essentially rubies and sapphires are exactly the same gem, they just are. different colors. They are, yes. Uh, which obviously they thought about when, you know, they made them the perfect fusion. Yeah. Um, that they basically had a choice when they fused together, and I'm guessing that Blue Diamond didn't really care for fusions either. So yeah. Sapphire essentially defected to Rose. Yeah. Uh, being Garnet, and Rose is accepting of everybody and loves everyone. Yes. She's pink. Love. <laughs> so, um... Hey, and, Garnet's room in the temple, however, is red and has a ton of lava, plus she is immune, immune to, to drowning, drowning and, lava, and lava. And I bet you she can't freeze to death either. Huh. Um, so... Uh, in that same scene on uh, the mural in the pyramid, in the middle, we see Rose fighting a diamond, or what we're assuming is a diamond, mm -hmm. and that diamond is very clearly on water. So in my head, Rose and Blue Diamond came to Earth to hollow it out for gems. The reason I think that is not only because they're pictured on the mural, and it's Rose with humans, and I really do believe that those are supposed to be Egyptian humans, not those things in the uh, kindergarten, like we were mentioning last time. Yeah. I believe that's Rose protecting the humans, because if you look at the bottom murals, which I really didn't pay attention before, it shows those same... I didn't pay attention to any of this, yeah. just for... Reference. It shows those same figures falling into all the traps that you see in the episode. Mm -hmm. So I think that what happened was they got there, realized that humans were there, and around the time of the Egyptians, um put these, which also leads me to believe that maybe the pyramids were actually like a I was going to say, maybe they are, in fact, the ancient aliens. Ooh. Right? Right? It's all wait, coming together no, now. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah. Aliens. We need a tinfoil hat. Right? <laughs> um, so, my guess is that Rose said, like, hey, this planet already has things on it, and Blue Diamond yeah. was just like, well, let's see if they're useful at all. We'll yeah. make a thing for them. And they all died, and eventually Rose said, enough, I'm yeah. done with this. And that's where that mural comes from. She's fighting Blue Diamond. And I think that the initial war was between Rose and Blue Diamond. Hmm. And that 
is where Lapis died. Right. And that is why she is so pissed when she sees Garnet. Maybe Amethyst doesn't know her yet, maybe Pearl doesn't know her yet, but that is why she is so angry when she sees Garnet charging towards her, and that is why Garnet knows exactly who she is. Yeah. But maybe Pearl didn't. Yeah. Um, so Lapis, who would have been uh, loyal to Blue Diamond, also, we didn't bring this up last time, Lapis's dress has a blue diamond on it. <laughs> It does. It does. It has a giant blue diamond on it. It has a belt in the middle of it, but the front of it is a blue diamond. Mm. And that leads me very, very much to believe that we're dealing with a bunch of different uh, legions. And Pearl's uh, outfit when in Space Race has a pink diamond on it. Sorry, we're turning it into a thing that we use in the pen strips. What? Hmm? I, Lord Hosk has been like, are you guys seeing this? He is taking a black piece of paper and turning it into a thing with the use of nothing but pen strokes and talent. Yep, that's Jeff. Jeff is fucking incredible, and I hate him. <laughs> Remember how you were harping on me earlier for yeah, being yeah. really talented? Fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you! <laughs> I was gonna say, like, you guys were talking about your art. I have a similar feeling about, like, I went back and read a bunch of my film, uh, my film studies essays that I... So, Submitted and got A pluses on, and then I went back and uh, and and read them, and I was like, "Oh my god, so many semicolons used inappropriately! How did my professor give me these good grades? Dear God!" Right. So anyway, sorry, uh, Doma man. Um, I'm under the impression that creating a gem takes a long ass time. And time As it does in real life. Yeah, time doesn't seem to mean that much to them. So even though they were on yeah. the planet five thousand years ago, uh, that's nothing they literally... in terms of geolog in terms of geologic time, that is a blip. Which which makes sense being that gems are geologic structures. Yes. Essentially. And why even now they still have trouble with the concept of time, you know? Yeah. Steven, you can't watch TV for, for a, a thousand, thousand years. years. And I love that that, that was held until they broke it. Yes, yeah. and then, or, or of course, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I'm going to take you out into space. We'll, we'll be, be back, back in a couple hundred years or yeah. whatever. It's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. They have no concept My dad yeah. will be dead by then. So yeah. while, while they're building gems in the kindergarten, and this also is what leads me to believe that the turmoil started between Rose and Blue Diamond, not only because I really do believe that she's fighting Blue Diamond in that mural, but also Amethyst is purple. Yeah. Which is a mix of rose and blue. Yep. Sure is. So I think that their color has something to do with it, and I also believe that blue is still alive, because I believe that Par uh, Peridot was created after the fact by From yellow and blue. Blue. Yep. Yellow and blue. And Jasper is arguably orange, but... Uh, there is a big theory going around that she's a forced fusion. Huh. She's the first forced fusion, and that she doesn't know it yet. But mm. I really, really, really do believe that Rebecca Sugar would have given us a little hint during yeah. her fusion with Lapis. Yeah. That and there shown would have been a third something. gem, yeah. maybe. Um. Um, and I didn't see that unless her nose, because it's very clearly like yellow, but it's it's the lighting, right? Like yeah. it's yellow on yeah. one side, orange on the other. It would have been something yeah. it would have so, been a more specific I'm not yeah. convinced I'm not convinced that Jasper is a force fusion I think that Jasper is just Jasper and I think that uh, Jasper just kind of happens to fit into the more yellow scheme yeah. for yellow diamond yeah and I believe that the gems that we will see who are sub 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 subservient to yellow diamond will be on the orange yellow <laughs> as I burn Side of the nice thing. all class in here guys um yeah, we're, we're going to see uh, a lot of greens and a lot of yellows coming out of this. Whereas yeah. um, we have a little bit of hodgepodge with the other three, but I think that they're all there for, for different reasons. And I think that that uh, Comic-Con clip that you may or may not have seen, I'm not saying that you need to spoil it, but I think it gives them very good reasons as to why they were in the extended song. Yeah. I think it gives them all very good reasons as to why they're there, and it's has nothing to do with allegiances to which gem there are. They're there for their own reasons, and they joined Rose for their own reasons. Yeah. And maybe Rose did have a lot of other followers, and that's why we see that flashback with um, Pearl, where she's giving her the choice to opt out and go back yeah. to Homeworld instead of staying with her. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So... That's In where the I'm end, at. I so don't. I don't think that Blue Diamond is dead. I think that Blue Diamond was defeated. 
I don't know if Yellow Diamond was there, and the reason I don't think Yellow Diamond was there is because Jasper wasn't there. Yeah. Um, and when you go, you take your Wait, no, dog. she was there. She said, I fought your armies. Oh. Interesting. Maybe yeah. she was there. Anyway. So regardless. maybe Yellow Diamond fucked off. I think that Yellow Diamond is in charge now that Rose is gone. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, I, and, and that, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that Blue Diamond uh, That one Comic-Con clip. I think that Blue Diamond is alive. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about Clear Diamond. I'm I'm still on the fence of, of that, of whether or not it's a fusion. Um, or a, an or, independent entity. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I really do think oh. that the color coding... You see Jasper in the hologram and sworn to the sword. Oh, fantastic. Great. I think so, I remember that, actually. In the end, Ash has made it all about race. I have made it all about race. I'm sorry. I made it about <laughs> color. But I think yeah, that I think no, that I think the rainbow color coding does have yeah. something to do with it, and I don't think that it's a mistake. Oh, sorry. Oh, you have to you've got to click on the other thing. screen. Oh, um, sorry. You have to use a mouse. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm learning um, everything. I the thing that and this has nothing to do with your um. Oh, uh, Lord Hosk. Listen. But my question is, where do Garnet and Opal fall into the continuum? Well, I feel like fusions are a slightly different thing because fusions don't have to be. Um, I think that somewhere along the line, they decided that fusions, I don't know how to put this, like, if you are a strong gem, you should just be a strong, huge gem. You should not use yeah. fusion as a way to make yourself more powerful or to defeat people. So I think back in the day on Homeworld, fusion was looked down upon, um, slash maybe they couldn't get it right, and then... Ruby and Sapphire came along, fused, and decided to n never unfuse because yeah. they're the perfect fusion. And yeah. they were just like, well, fuck you. Get out yeah. then. And Rose is like, no, no. No, no. She's yeah. gone now. Uh, I think that Garnet has been around and you see her in the, that painting from like the 1800s yeah. as Garnet still. So she's been Garnet for hundreds and hundreds of years already. So I, I'm yeah. a little confused about the aging on gems because like when we see, you know, uh, Amethyst in like the early flashbacks with Greg, you know, at the beginning of Rose's relationship, they draw her very kitty. Like her, her hair is very childlike. She seems to be acting. I feel like very they do like grow, but like very, very, yeah. very slowly. And yeah. I think it, that they might have actually needed to retcon it a little bit because, especially in those, maybe they just made a bad choice by giving her like the short hair and the really like kitty jumper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. like you know, like she's. Act, you know, she's definitely acting very childlike in that. You know, like she's super curious about this human that, like, is. Yeah. They, I guess they don't interact with humans at all, but then we see that they have interacted with them in the past. Yeah. Right. You know, so it's like. Oh. Um, I, uh, well, and it's this difference between, I mean, if, you know, red, blue, and yellow are the primary colors, then we start getting into the secondary colors. Yes. Um,. The thing that uh, kind of struck me about the line, and this has nothing to do with Ash's theory, but the line of um, fusion is just a way to make weak gems stronger. Uh, what resonated with me about that, and especially the way that Jasper says it with such contempt, is it, it echoed a lot of the things that people have said to me, and specifically that family members have said to me about being on antidepressants. Mm. Of like, you're just on a thing that makes you feel better, and that alleviates all your symptoms. Um, and I was but, like, yeah. But, yeah, that's what medicine does. That's the point? I've also thought about, and I know a lot of other people have thought about, and I haven't actually seen someone say it out loud yet, mm -hmm. but... I'm not saying that it's the same thing because they're aliens and they're different beings and yeah. that's not a thing, but like there's a lot of parallels to be drawn in between fusion and sex. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, it's a dance. Especially Garnet's reaction to people being forced together. Yes. Uh, because fusion is a choice and it's very, very, very clear that, you know, Sapphire and Ruby are in love and that's why it's working. Um, yeah. But again, it's not sex, it's fusion. They are aliens, it's not the same thing, but there yes. are parallels to be, uh, like... Yeah, well, and, and one of the writers, specifically on his Tumblr, because again, as I said last stream, 
went I went to the TV tropes page, which gave me a lot of good links, and one of them was to an ask on one of the writers' pages where they were like, "Can you elaborate on the relationship between Ruby and Sapphire? Is it platonic or romantic?" And they were like, "Definitely romantic." Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Um, yeah. So and. Obviously, in the last Stephen Bomb, they kind of, like, go into a little bit more, especially, you know, in the whole idea that, like, someone's being tricked into it, and in the previous Stephen Bomb, where she's so horrified, yeah. there are parallels to be drawn when you see a bunch of gems who were forced together, yeah. creating a broken thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, it spoke loud and clear to me, and, like, that, for the first time, maybe minus when Jasper first showed up, you see Garnet scared. Yeah. But oh, like that not, was so powerful. Not just scared in the was... way like shit. I've made a mistake. It's no. like holy fuck. Like... Yeah. And when we when we when we were texting back and forth, um, because I got as as we've said very confused because all Ash said to me was, "I'm drawing the the thing, the big thing from the latest episode of Steven Universe." And so I watched that last episode, which is the slumber party episode, like a hawk, right, waiting for the thing. And I was like, I don't know what she's talking about. Right. Yeah. And, um, but one other thing... And that, yes, romantic can be platonic, and like I just yes. said, um, they are aliens, so I'm not actually even concerned that they have any kind of sexual content. I think that no, it's, it's a parallel in a way. Yeah. Like Fusion is their version, but it's also something else because they're not us, so I yeah, can't even. I can't even. Um, but I... Uh, and yes, Sex can you be used as a weapon, R.E. Lapis, and you know you can have incredibly toxic. Oh, and the way that she asks her to yeah. the manipulation, yeah, of, like fuse with me, come on, we can defeat them. Don't you want to get back at them? It's yeah, exactly, exactly how you would hear like one of those creepy guys being like, "Nah, sit down. You don't want to go yet. Yeah, yeah. You get back at like, your boyfriend, on, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. We'll make dick. it. I'll we'll make it good, baby. Like, yeah, and 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 um, Malachite is the perfect example of two people, because I've had a relationship like this, where two people come together and have an amazing spark that's incredibly powerful and super self-destructive. Like, really bad when together. Very good when apart. Very bad together. Um, not my current relationship, for the record. <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, and uh, but the other thing when you we were talking via text uh, and you said something about uh, the the are we episode Ghostbusters now we, we need are to talk Ghostbusters sorry awesome <laughs> um, or we said something about uh, the you said something about the episode we need to talk and how it was so powerful and I replied with oh my god yeah that was so creepy and that was because I mistook the we need to talk where is which is where Rainbow Quartz comes from with that episode where they discover the forced partial gross fusion of just random limbs and right. where Garnet nearly I'm breaks really, okay, apart. I'm really bad with the names because when I read them on IMDb sometimes like I'll look up yeah. the trivia and stuff like that it always lists like it lists them separately but it also lists them as the like these are how they were aired together in a half right. hour episode and it's always just the first name first right. so I group them into the same episode and I, like I said before I bought them all on iTunes where they're they different come, they come in two episode installments so yeah. I know these two episodes by the first episode's name but I mistook them for the one where Garnet nearly falls apart and I was like yeah that was really, really horrifying. Like, I completely understand where you just sort of start to crumble o over seeing this thing. So, yeah. It was, uh... Yeah, the, this is... I don't know, man. Like, Stephen... I, and I, again, was talking to this co-worker about it, and I was like, again, not only is it a really, really interesting... Uh, concept when you get into it and it once you get hit with the feels you're all in but it also has these queer relationships and these this really really good uh representation of female pronoun using characters and and she's been like every single day that I think about this I think about how fucking clever Rebecca Sugar is because there's a certain amount of like, what's the word for it? There's a certain amount of deniability that when people go into it and say, like, you know, 
these two are clearly having sex when they fuse, like when Amethyst and Garnet mm -hmm. do their sexy dance to fuse. Like, it's very provocative. Like, Pearl is right to cover Steven's eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, the, you the can, shoulder shimmy. And, and that stuff. leg opening. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That kills me every time. Yup. And she just runs sure into is. it. And I'm just like, yeah. damn, dude. But um, that being said, she can always just go back and say, they're aliens. Like, yeah. And they're just they, dancing. They don't, they don't apply to the same rules as humans. Yeah. And they don't. And that's what's great about it, that is that you can interpret it any way you mm -hmm. want to. Uh, interestingly, on Tumblr, you'll see a lot of comics and whatnot where, you know, it's like Cartoon Network comes in, oh, no, you're making it too gay, and they'll be like, oh, no, it's just this. It's like, okay. And then they leave, and Rebecca Sugar will be like, more gay. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it's a very simplistic way to view it, but uh, I think a lot of people don't understand. Cartoon Network's really very supportive of what they're doing, but what they have, <laughs> one of the things they have to think about is the... Uh, you know, the show has to make money in order to continue. And for them to do that, they have to sell the show to a lot of different markets, not just North America. They have to sell it to markets where that the stuff isn't, isn't just frowned upon, but is like downright illegal. Yeah. And they have to be very careful about skirting that line. Like, I mean, freaking Adventure Time gets uh, censored to hell in yeah. Australia for some reason. Really? Yeah, huh. Australia of all places. Oh, Australia has a hard... Yeah, it's like, it's, issue with that. it's so kind of weird, you know. Like they, they can't uh, they can't have like Stephen talk back to the gems because that will teach children in Australia to talk back to their parents. Oh wow, that's like yeah, yeah, that's that's like nineteen. Yeah, so like it, 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 when like stuff. in an episode where Stephen, you know, you know, like it happens rarely, but when Stephen like just kind of breaks down and yells at yeah. one of the gems, that probably wouldn't fly in huh. Australia. Uh, Interesting. It's, it's weird, like yeah. things that you wouldn't you wouldn't think of. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's, uh, I don't know, I find that that all very very fascinating, and I find I, it's um, and I mean we are steadily getting towards. I, I I we really have seen, and you know there was the earlier argument of you know we are in a golden age of animation. In a lot of ways we are. In a lot of ways we're in a golden age of television. In some ways I feel that television is going to pick up when movies when mainstream blockbuster movies collapse and they will <laughs> within our lifetimes absolutely there is going to be a bust like a bad one tv is going to be there because the groundwork has already been laid for them to pick up the slack well oh. so many actors like movie actors are saying you know tv is where the most interesting stuff Nick is happening yeah. said he thinks sworn to the sword would not air in australia interesting that's entirely possible that's yeah. A, yeah. or even the stevani episode might be too much for uh, yeah. australia because you, you know because you know who's like stevani not only is that the fusion, but like, and, and this is again me, and I want to say not wanting to generalize or anything, but very kind of look like the look is a masculine body shape with feminine features. Stefani, Stefani looks kind of, and not like everyone, but kind of like a trans woman a little if yeah. you were to draw a cart like if you were to sit a cartoonist and we're not, down we're not even like clear on like what gender it is and like that's part of the beauty of the show honestly absolutely. but like it leaves you to question like i know a lot of people are questioning it and they need to know like i need to know the gender of this i need to know what's happening because yeah. like i have strong feelings about gender but at the end of it it's just like who the fuck cares i love steve stevani like yeah absolutely and in a weird twisted way it's teaching you to love anybody regardless of gender. Yes. And she's so fucking clever and I want to kiss Rebecca Sugar. Like, I can't yeah. handle it. Like, Very I want to kiss Rebecca Sugar Stevani too. Stevani apparently uses they, them pronouns. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah awesome. like, it, like it doesn't, awesome. they don't explicitly say it in the episode, but that's, yeah. they just do it through context. Like yeah. They, that's how they... But the, the whole notion of the fact that gender is a spectrum, it's not mm -hmm. a binary, and... Uh, my sister is doing her uh, degree. She has worked with mem um, disabled kids, both physically and developmentally disabled kids, for years. Like, when she lived in Calgary, she was a uh, an aide, and she would also be a counselor for a summer camp that was specifically for, mm -hmm. for, for kids who... Uh, were on that spectrum, and so she's currently doing her linguistics degree, wanting to go into 
speech pathology and she was telling me how in many circles um there is a movement to accept the pronoun hen as a gender i think i've seen a post about that yeah as a, a gender neutral term in mm -hmm. english and i think it is it's swedish or norwegian or somewhere in that area of Europe, uh, that's where it originally comes from. But the fact is that one of the problems with English is that we only have masculine and feminine pronouns. We don't have the gender neutral one. Um, and we kind of need one. We're going to get one. No, oh, no, Alex's cat is sick. Oh. oh, God. For those of you guys who don't know, Alex very recently lost one of his cats. Yeah. And it was heartbreaking. And it was awful. I beseech you guys to not only follow Alex, I think his Twitter's just at Alex Stacy. Yeah. Um, you can probably find him through Lure People, or I think I retweeted him recently, so you can probably find yeah. him in my feed. But uh, last time he uh, had to deal with a sick cat, um, he ended up having to do kind of like a fundraiser because yeah. it needed to go in for chemo. Yeah. So if you guys do follow him and you see him doing that again, please throw a couple bucks his way if he does that again, because... As uh, pet owners. Yeah, it's heartbreaking, and yeah. the amount of money... Like, the amount of money that we would spend on our pets is limitless, but we don't have limitless money. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, at Alex... Uh, S-T-E-A-C-Y -E is... Uh, yeah, he's going to draw stream for tips tonight. Yeah. So okay.